Oh man, these early mornings are killers, but today for this episode we're actually going to be checking out a really cool Kyusha gathering just up the road in, in uh, Ome. Still driving the NSXR, so I can't complain. We just had a, a really nice drive up here on the, on the hills. Basically this event is a monthly kind of gathering, sort of a cars and coffee. It starts materializing at 6 a.m. Uh, it's just past seven now, so uh, it should be in full uh, bloom as, as we get there. It'll basically be a nice collection of older Japanese cars. There's always a, a great variety, so you really never know what you're gonna see. You can easily be surprised at gatherings like this. So uh, I'm just gonna get uh, a quick breakfast before we head out and then uh, we jump back in the NSXR and uh, drive to the venue. And here we are, um, arrived at the car park and it's absolutely insane. I can't even describe the turnout today. It's not even only old cars. It's a mix of everything. Like I just parked next to this Datsun fair lady with a red top. And check out this uh, 180SX Impreza RX-7. I mean, honestly, uh, I was gonna say before, or at least I did say before, it's gonna be a bunch of variety, but I never expected anything like this today. Look, even a Saab just came inside now. Sick uh, 86 from one of the bases. All right, I think we're just gonna start walking it and just uh, take it all in. It's almost like being in a time machine. I mean, check these two Sylvias out. Oh my God. This is like the homologation special or X rally car by the looks of it. Nissan 240RS. This definitely has been used in rallying before. It's got the, all the computer, the onboard analog computers, the map thing. Insane. And there's a regular Sylvia here, and then the very first Sylvia, which I can't even imagine what this car must be worth now. They didn't make too many of these. I mean, I've only ever seen these at like, you know, museums, and rarely at like Moon Eyes events. So this is the CSP311 Sylvia. Beautiful, beautiful car. Old Skyline. Caterham, a ton of bikes of every type. Look at this guy with his two stroke Suzuki RGM. Oh my god, this is too good! Amazing. So, if you recall. We actually saw this group of guys at the Moon Eyes event um, last weekend. That's a nice Bosses Locus Helica. So good, eh? Saitama works. And the selection here just keeps impressing. I mean, guys, please take a look at this. Stunning Hakoska four door. Right behind it, a Ken Mary. 
and look at the venue. Right, let's keep walking. Little Honda Beat. Another Bosazoku Celica. The paint on this. This is where over fenders came from, guys. And slightly more sedate one. Slightly more uh, tucked in fenders. And there's a few there's cars like spilling out into the road here. We'll go take a look. Super sick. That's a truck on Yoshi Racing Wheels. Beautiful restoration. Nice color too. And then, oh, what? So right in front of this uh, Renault Twingo is my favorite K car of all times. Mazda AZ1. Of course, this is the one with the, the ball wing door. My dream is to get one of these and do like a 13B swap. Something that Ari and Mia already did back in the day. Check out the sick pairing of Z31Zs with a first generation Exige in the background. Beautiful Mazda RX3 on brand new Watanabe wheels. And this is quite a cool uh, coincidence. This is Alec here. He's the guy that does the B-roll and edits all the videos you guys see. He's just uh, launched his latest photography book and on the cover is a really cool 86, which today happens to be at the meet. Wow, what a setup. What a restoration this is. Oh, I've got to point out this uh, louvered cover on the back. Beautiful. And of course, this is a US import. It's a Datsun 240, not a Fair Lady Z. And there's another one across here with the engine on display. OER carburetors. And it has the L Series Turbo cam cover for some reason. Something different. On equips, look at the interior, Recaro seats, super clean dash. As, as people kind of conserve these cars, they actually tend to get way better and better as you know, uh, people fork out money and, and keep adding cooler and newer parts to their cars and they turn out better than when they rolled off the production. What am I looking at here? This is a Nissan Stasia that's been given a Hakoska front end swap. This is ridiculously weird and different. I mean, you know, you've seen R34 swaps, R35 swaps, uh, you know, for the face on, on stages, but Hakoska front and rear. How about a Koenig special? Look at this, guys. On vintage BBS wheels. Even got the old school Pirelli P0 Asimetrico. big fender flares and that crazy trunk spoiler and of course a bit of testarossa in there and if you look inside can you make that out it's got louis vuitton <laughs> clad interior <laughs> this is too cool all right we've got to find the owner of this car and actually do a proper story on it this is too amazing nice pairing here Nice Lotus uh, Elise 220 and next to it a Jensen Healy. And as this uh, S660 pulls in, you may have noticed there's another Nissan Exa. Like two Exas at the same meet. <laughs> it's on three spoke Volk wheels. And of course that bizarre rear end. So uh, Nissan Pulsar NX is what this is called. I guess it's possibly a later generation one of the EXA. So Nissan PAL, a Takeoka single seater, old school Skyline. I don't know, this meat is turning into more of a museum. It's like somebody emptied out a car museum and just brought everything here. They kind of mixed it up. Some Infinity Q45s. 
and so many bikes. And speaking of bikes, just to kind of highlight how much people spend on their vehicles here in Japan, you know, two wheels or four wheels. Look at this little thing here. It's got literally every possible accessory on there. Little oil cooler down there, shovel forks, front nice brakes, Sears dampers, coilovers. This is a monkey on crack. This proves that you don't need to do anything to these cars. Just drop them down slightly on nice choice of old school wheels like these Focus Racing Advaniovas. Little tiny steering wheel. You gotta have your shift knob and a dash cover. And you're good to go. And behind it, check out the sore. Simple. Oh, what an interior. Look at that. This car park has a, a really nice Showa feel to the little shops they have lined up here. Old fridges with an assortment of ice creams. Only 170 yen. They even have wasabi gelato for 350 yen. So it's basically like a really cool place to even bring your family. Obviously, I didn't bring my kids this morning because we had to leave at like, you know, before six. There's a nice little Lotus Europa here on Watanabe's. These wheels are perfection for this car. There's a nice Carina here. With a highly tuned foray. Nice coils. And look at this beautiful 2.7 911. Stripped out interior, roll cage. So this is a car that's built for driving, obviously. Nice little sighting is this 147 Alfa Romeo. Ducati Corsa Special. This is a limited edition collab they did back in the day. Sort of faded. It's a really bizarre shade of red. Nice 32 GTR coming in. <laughs> How's I mas? Watch the curb. Oh. Go check this one out. It has the, the fender blades that run a, along the, the trunk and also back here. 80s aerodynamic package in full effect. <laughs> it's even got a transparent spoiler. And you thought the Corvette ZR1 did it first? Nope. Nissan did it with the Skyline. This is a real Akoska. That is the unmistakable sound of the S20. So next to the Fair Lady 2000 is this beautiful AW11 Mark II. So this is the supercharger version. And this has kind of materialized since I left this corner of the car park. How many Skylines, how many Hackles have showed up? Look at this. Whew. Check this out on Sparkle Wheels. Next to another T37, T27 rather. Rally spec with the CBA projectors. Variety, variety, variety. There's even an Isuzu here. This is an Isuzu Ballet. Very, very rare car. The Isuzu Sport was uh, an Italian designed uh, sports coupe that was made in the late 60s to kind of compete against the you know, emerging uh, sports car market that was happening here in Japan and to even kind of fight off the imports that were coming into Japan at the time. Just spotted this MV Augusta F4 and it's actually sitting next to a Moto Guzzi D7 stone. It's really funny because uh, 
in Japan they pronounce uh, motoguzi as motoguchi, which sounds really weird in Japanese. There's another lotus here, Opa, leaving the meat. So uh, yeah, this meeting pretty much happens between 6 and 10, so I think we have a little bit more time before everybody starts making their way out. Even a charger showed up. Big boy charger. Oh man, took a good timing. Shelby Cobra GT350 Shelby GT350 in Japan guys this is insane this is the real deal the Cobra heads okay so the owner of the four-door Hako has kindly opened the engine here the L28 and this other four door, far more extreme, even has a side exhaust. Look how low that sits to the ground. Massive Watanabe's, lots of lip. Trunk spoiler. Train handles, of course. So this pairing looks like it's ready to hit the track. Look at this. This is color coordination galore. So L series on Mikuni carbs. Pretty nicely cleaned up engine bay, nipped and tucked. So if you ever wanted to see what's inside one of these Bosozoku cars, Kaido Racer, bucket seat. Gotta have the velour on the dash. <laughs> this reminds me of a shelf. That's something out of a cemetery, isn't it? T27 rally cars ready to take off. How did I not see this Datsun 1600? Oh my god, it's just so clean. So I just noticed another slightly rare car. So this is a Dualis, it's the station wagon version of the uh, Mark II. But there's one thing um, I sort of kept for last because it's comical and so Japanese and it's that little K truck over here so this one here this is the uh, Hachiroku coffee truck from Nanzo coffee he strapped a A86 to the top of his Subaru K truck and out the back he usually sells coffee obviously the shop is closed today Oh my gosh, check out this Integra on OZ Futuras. Old school ones. Not bad, but check this out. This is a Fiat X19 designed by Bertone. I used to love this car as a kid. It was literally one of the few sports cars that you would see a lot of in Italy as I was growing up. A beautiful car, still is today, very compact. Has that kind of Bertone feel about it, very angular. And of course, pop-out lights. And they even had an Abarth version of this car with the, with the snorkel that would feed the mid-mounted four-cylinder. I think it was a 1.3, I forget now. Sitting next to a V-Spec 2 R32 GTR. Sitting on G7's period correct. All the way. So the GTR coming through. quite close to one of the military bases uh, so there's a lot of uh, white plate cars coming in and out this is an uh, E63 Carina with a 4AGE that's been dropped down so low like if you look the subframe is literally like three centimeters from the from the ground really clean car has all the lace on the seats. There's a bride that are one bucket. Old school all the way.
The Z we were looking at before with the crazy exhaust, it's actually a 432. So it has the S20 from a Skyline GTR. And it really looks like this was a race car at some point. Painted over fender, stripped out interior. It's really strange because I'm used to seeing all the 432s at Andosan restores and they're always super clean, but to see one in this kind of race ready condition, obviously used and abused, it's actually quite, quite nice to see. Okay, I just spotted something really cool. Uh, again, something you usually only see in museums. Um, so this is actually a Skyline, but it's still when Nissan uh, wasn't fully merged with Prince, so it was the Prince Skyline. Not quite sure why there's a Nissan logo there. But here's that Skyline logo. And the interior. And this is how you keep cool when you have no air cons. <laughs> So, the Prince Skyline. So if you uh, compare the green one to the white one in front, you'll notice that the white one is actually being slightly roof chopped. I noticed because it, it kind of it had a really weird wide stance and I couldn't really put my finger on it until I compared it to the one behind. Absolutely crazy.